There's a lot of gender terminology out there, and as someone who tries to have a simple mindset about life and what's going on around me, I try to understand this through a psychological approach that is taught by Eric Erickson. Eric Erickson is a psychoanalyst who lived in the 20th century. So questions about gender identity can come as early as three years of age, but Eric Erickson described that people in their teenage years, typically beginning around age 13, deal with this inner conflict about their identity. And if they don't deal with that successfully, they can get confused about their roles in life and they can get confused about their gender roles or their roles adapting into society. And so Eric Erickson hypothesized that some people with mental diseases can originate from one's identity issues during this teenage development, such as gender identity disorders or borderline psychotic episodes. The psychotic episodes often when people get emotionally distressed, like when they lose a, a relationship or a romantic partner, it can also, according to Erickson, lead to delinquent problems like committing a crime. So someone, according to Erickson, who successfully dealt with the conflict in this stage, get this virtue of fidelity. In other words, they have trust in themselves and they'll have better trust uh, in their life as well. So according to Erickson, one needs to successfully deal with this identity conflict at this part in life in order to pass through the next psychosocial stages in life without much issue or turmoil. So the question about identity is a big one. It affects someone's relationship with themselves, with others, with God. It'll have a role in their school and work, family, friends, hobbies. It can affect their health and have long lasting changes on their body especially if someone decides to have sex changing surgery that they realize 20 years from now, 30 years from now, they don't really want that. So this talk will focus on those people for at least six months time have noticed marked distress from the gender that they were born with and the gender that they want to switch to. They may realize a strong desire or interest to switch genders, a strong preference to wear the other gender's clothes, maybe make-believe play or fantasy to be another gender or stuff like that. And so it causes a conflict and distress in them that hinders their ability to function in school or work or other important areas of their life. So there are some thoughts of what could be going on here. Biologically, testosterone is a hormone that affects brain development in the fetus. And so testosterone leads to more masculine features well, estrogen is another hormone that leads to more feminine features. So it's thought that these hormone levels during fetal development can affect which gender one may identify with. For example, someone who is born female but has higher levels of testosterone may biologically be more attracted to masculine characteristics. On the other hand, one who is born a male that has higher levels of estrogen may be more attracted to female stuff. So that's on the biological level. Psychologically, it's thought that the mother-child relationship may play a big role in gender identity. For instance, a mother that is hostile or not valuing their child, perhaps even being abusive to them, this can lead to gender identity problems for the child. Some children will feel more valued by choosing another gender. Another possible cause is that a bad event happens to the mother, like the mother dies or there's an extended absence of the mother. And so a young boy may start to become more female to have a more motherly role in the family dynamics. Another situation could be the father is not present, and so the relationship between a mother and the child get overly close. So those are some biological and psychological causes about what's thought could lead to someone wanting to change their identity uh, gender-wise. But I think the concept of this identity is a little bit deeper than that. In fact, I think it's much deeper than that. I think the best approach is a spiritual approach. Our identity is most properly rooted not in our genders, not in our environments, not in our families or school or work, but it's best rooted in our relationship with God. We are spiritual beings made in God's image and likeness. And from my understanding, the best way that humans can identify with God is through Jesus Christ by the power and grace of the Holy Spirit. Only after knowing that can the rest of our life be truly fulfilled. 
here are verses from the Bible which shows that God created people as male and females. And then I have verses about St. Paul who describes all these other factors that he ident identified with before he found Christ. And Christ revealed himself to Paul as Paul was genuinely trying to seek who God was.